Ah, the 80s. The years of big hair, big clothes statements, big weddings, big bands, big money, big movies and not so big computers. Today on Al's Geek Lab we go down memory lane and go to 1982. The IBM PC had been out for around a year and people found out that it didn't just run VisiCalc, it could be programmed for games too. So let's talk the talking head, give a nod to the neon, fasten up your fanny pack and boot up Basica, it's time to get your game on. Now you may recall in my last video, 1981 was the year that the IBM PC 5150 was released to the public masses. Now the big deal was that IBM had made a business machine which could also be used in the home, just like the contemporary microcomputers of the time. However, it was a serious hulking great big machine and of course it was made for text displays. When it first came out it exported the MDA or monochrome display adapter which was black and white or in this case phosphorus green. So it wasn't really suitable for graphics, in actual fact it had no graphics capabilities whatsoever, meaning glorious ASCII text. So later on, just a few months later, IBM went to fix this and created the CGA card or the Color Graphics Adapter. In glorious four display colours, you could see things which sort of looked like graphics. So along came some people and decided that they could make games. Aha! So the popular games of the time of course were things like Pac-Man and Space Invaders, but how did the IBM PC fair in 1982. Let's find out. It's all coming up here on Al's Geek Lab. So at number 10 on our countdown of the top 10 games, in my opinion, of 1982 for the IBM PC, it starts with Snipes. It's a good reason to start with Snipes as well because, of course, it looks like a text-based game and that's, well, because it is a text-based game. However, its gameplay is quite good. You can shoot up, down, left and right at the same time as moving your character around. You've got to navigate yourself through this little maze and you've got to shoot little bad dudes and you get the gist of it. Although it may be ASCII text, it's relatively colourful and if you want it in full text mode then it's a higher resolution than the CGA version you're looking at here. Either way, it's perfectly playable but is very easy to complete. And then when you actually complete the game, it says, congratulations, you actually did it, which was slightly condescending. In at number nine on the collection of games from 1982 is none other than Fuzzy Worm by Boy's Computer. Now, this one here, if you've played the game Centipede, then you probably find this one familiar. Fuzzy Worm, I guess that's a caterpillar, and you're on a pastoral mushroom patch. You can move your little dude left, right, and even people up and down. So yeah, you've got to make sure that you um, kill everything in sight. Uh, you can break up your Fuzzy Worm into pieces. Just make sure they don't get to the bottom of your screen or bad things will happen. More Fuzzy Worm. And of course there's the obligatory baddies and they include the spider and the mushroom dropping flea. As you saw earlier, 1982, people still had monochrome adapters, meaning text-only displays, and the people who played Fuzzy Worm were not left out in the cold. There was also an option to use a non-colour monitor when you launched the game. So here's what it looked like in MDA. Thanks for that, boys computer. Next up at number 8 is Space Strike from Datamost. You are the last outpost between Earth and the aliens who believe the only good human is a dead one. They come at you, battalion after battalion, unleashing bombs and missiles. You have your laser and your skill. Are they enough to save your home planet? All of that interesting story when it's really just space invaders. But 
It's a reasonably good clone of Space Invaders, I can't complain too much, but if you've played Space Invaders before, you know what it's like. It's in CGA, so it's in lovely four colour palette, and it's got reasonable sound effects. And that's Space Strike. The end. Now this next game in at number 7 is Paratrooper. Now many people think that this first came out on the PC. Not true, in 1981 on the Apple II there was a game called Sabotage, which was pretty much the same game. However, this one is fairly well known for being one of the first in its genre. So basically you're on a little turret, you move from left and right, and if you press the up arrow you can blast things out of the sky. Particular to that, those things are helicopters which move in waves and they can go up and down and then there's planes as well which drop bombs on you but those paratroopers are the annoying ones so they come out of the helicopters, they fall down at different random ways and then you've got to shoot them all down because if you don't shoot them all down and four of those paratroopers get to either side it's game over. Those little cretins, they go up to the side of your platform and they get you. They blow it up. One thing to note about the gameplay here is if you're playing against other friends, you gotta get the highest score, right? And the way that you get the highest score is to not shoot a lot, because every time you press that shoot button, you lose a point. All in all, Paratrooper is a fun game. However, what happens is it gets monotonous pretty quickly and yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do. So that's why it stays firmly at number 7 on the top 10 list. A well known game, well executed, just a bit repetitive. In at number 6 is Cosmic Crusader. This game is pretty much a mixture between Space Invaders and the coin op classic Galaga. It's great fun, it's really nice to look at, and you know, it's, it's fairly difficult to play. I quite like it, the animations, the good graphics, full colour, that's four full colours. Just um, just get you every time. It's full of fun surprises. Each new level begins. Giant alien ships that appear from time to time give you a chance for a big bonus. Overall, it's a very well executed game of its era. So the next game, an apple a day keeps the doctor away, except when it's an apple panic. I've got no idea what these things are supposed to be, apparently they're apples, but they've got eyes, tentacles and little feet, and they're after you. So in this case, the apples are not good, they won't keep the doctor away. And yes, if they bash into you, you've got problems, so don't let that happen. Get your uh, spade out, get your shovel out, and start shoveling hard because you're going to need to make holes for these apples to fall into. And once they fall into it, then you're going to bash them over the head. It's quite violent, really, for something so innocent sounding. But anyway, this is Apple Panic, and once you um, once you get going on this one, it's actually quite good fun. If you're successful in a level, the next levels will feature more and more baddies uh, than the previous one, and it gets a bit tricky. And just when you thought these apples couldn't get any more trippy, they go in different colours. Depending on the apple's colour, they may require from one to three level falls, so you may have to dig several aligned holes. Besides, the deeper the fall, the higher you score. Apple Panic by Olaf Lubeck. Must be a strange guy, strange concept, lots of fun. Now bear with me on this next one, it's called Asteroid Pilot and it seems when you google that nobody ever heard of it, but it's actually quite good fun. It's written in basic, you can view the source code, it's really really basic, funnily enough. But when you press that shift key you can navigate your line, which is obviously your spacecraft, through this asteroid stricken landscape. So basically what you have to do is hold down the shift key and it's got like an anti-gravity kind of motion which makes it quite fun and also quite tricky. When you go and hit one of the bits of space dust 
your ship turns purple. And of course, that means that the dust has had an adverse effect on your engines. But basically, that changes the gravitational properties of your ship. So what you need to do is uh, make sure you traverse from one side of this cosmos to the other. And once you do so, you're rewarded with a CGA almost full palette display of white, purple and cyan. Anyway, once that's done, you increase your skill level and you're on to the next level. Each asteroid field has a random chosen difficulty level which determines the amount of asteroids and space dust that you'll have to dodge. Crash into one of those rocks and you are toast. Hitting the dust particle just reduces your maneuverability, but you can restore it back to normal if you bump into another bit of space dust. It's actually really quite good fun. It looks basic as all hell, but it is really cool, and that's why it got the coveted spot of number four. You just have to play it to agree with me. First we had Apple Panic, with some strange apples going around and marauding you. But in Burger Time, we have Evil Eggs sausages and pickles, if you can decipher that that's what they are, and they're chasing you around the area. You need to make the hamburgers whilst avoiding these baddies. Of course, you've got to get all the ingredients together, dropping them from higher up onto the burger area below. Now, that maybe this is the game strategy that McDonald's or Burger King have actually taken on, because every time I buy one of their burgers, it's sloppy as hell, looks like it's been dropped from a very large height as well. Anyway, this is much more addictive than you'd actually think. You move Chef Pepper around and you make your burgers. So as you go past a bit of food, say it's a burger patty or a bit of lettuce, it doesn't matter. As it drops, you can squish your baddies and you get points for doing that. Also, you have a bit of pepper on you. Just a little bit, not lots. So use it sparingly. If you get in a situation where you are stuck and you need to get past the baddie, you can spray him with pepper and of course you're on your way. Kind of like Pac-Man's bonuses, every now and again an extra little helper will appear on the screen and usually that helper is a little pepper bottle. So go grab that pepper bottle and you got more pepper to get on to your baddies. Now, higher levels result in new level designs. They've also got faster baddies and there are more ingredients to assemble. This game is really, really addictive. I keep going back to play it all the time and it's one of the best games on this list. So there you go, it's at number three. On the box it says, play Crossfire, defend your city against dangerous spiders and other menacing insects running madly through the streets determined to destroy everything in their path. The streets look like boxes to me and the baddies, I don't know, on the box one of them looks like C-3PO. So. Hey, who knows? But anyway, this one is at level two. It was closely contended between the number two and the number three spot. I liked Burger Time and my partner liked Crossfire. So guess who won? Anyway, it's quite good fun. You get to move up, down, left, right with the right hand side of the keyboard and on the left hand side of the keyboard you can shoot up, down, or left, or right. So you don't, you're not just shooting in the direction that you're moving. That really screws with your brain, uh, so you have to get used to it, but it is quite addictive. It's actually a clone of an arcade game called Targ, but anyway, you've got to blast your way out of all the baddies and make sure that you can dodge their line of fire. You will find that there are bonuses as well as little diamond things leave their buildings that they've overtaken and you can just swallow them up and um, once you've all done all of that then you can go on to the next level. Note though that ammunition is limited and from time to time you'll have to restock by pricking up a fresh supply. As the game develops it's not just about killing all the bad guys, you've really got to stay alive and so you're dodging, parrying and all that good stuff. So once you get to that point then you've got to really use your agility and your brain and it's really difficult. Interestingly enough this is one of Sierra Online's very first games and it's not a bad effort. Now in at the number one spot. This one is probably a little bit controversial 
but in 1982, a lot of games looked similar. This one is a kind of clone on the game Quix, Q-I-X. It's called Boxer Rebellion. The only thing that I could find on Google about Boxer Rebellion was uh, that it was a war in the early 20th century. Anyway, this is nothing to do with that rebellion. This is purely a game which is a bit of action, a bit of puzzle. The game is played on a board with several boxes defined by lines. You control the diamond-shaped character and your baddie is the circular character and he's coming after you to make sure that you don't get around these boxes. Now, this sounds pretty boring, but I can honestly tell you that as you get on with this game, it's pretty good fun. There are nine difficulty levels. The further you get down the game, you get more area to cover and you also get more baddies against you at the same time. And on these harder levels, the baddies can shoot at you as well. Now, the, there are a few other keys that you can press other than just the up, down, left, right. You can press the F10 key or the top button on your joystick, you'll lose 25 points, but importantly, you'll leave a gap behind you so the body can't get you. Even more useful, you can press F9 and that jumps you away so you can jump to somewhere else on the board, but you'll lose 50 points for that one as well. So I didn't do that too much because I found that I could run away from the body quite a lot, uh, which was making it somewhat easy, but towards the later levels, it was a pretty handy feature. Now you can see that the aim of the game really is just to capture the boxes and to capture the box you've got to go around all four sides of the box but the longer you leave it without capturing that box the score that you can get from it can go down. So the idea is to go get those boxes in the most efficient and fastest way possible. Boxer Rebellion definitely isn't the hardest game on the top 10 list however it is quite a lot of fun and for that reason and that reason only it gets the coveted number one spot. Although not in the top 10, some other worthy mentions of 1982 include Anti-Ballistic Missile by Ed Davis. You're the commander of an anti-ballistic missile defense system and your mission is to defend the IBM East Coast sites from the enemy. The game is a clone of the Missile Command variant of game and it's pretty easy to play except it divides by zero whenever you complete it. Also quite a lot of fun is the game Hoser, which is basically like Snake. Uh, there's lots of different variants on the levels to make it a little bit more entertaining and it's, um, it's all written in basic so again you can look at the source code. It's a lovely little game, quite well done, yeah, not bad. Then if you've watched the movie Tron then you'll be familiar with the gameplay in the next game which is Novatron. The keys in this game are absolutely ridiculous so trying to control your little Tron like thing against the computer is almost nigh on impossible which is sad because it could be an otherwise pretty decent game. It's got 3D graphics and yeah it's pretty fast paced and fun. Then there's PC Man, which is a very good clone of Pac-Man. In this early stage of the IBM PC's life, it is a pretty true clone of the original game. Very well done. The speed of Pac-Man versus the ghosts is the only problem. You're quite a lot slower than the ghosts, so the ghosts can gobble you quite a lot easier. Tic-Tac-Toe is, well, Tic-Tac-Toe, but it's pretty good. It's text mode. It does the job, you can play against a real person or the computer. When you play against the computer, there are a few levels of difficulty that you can choose from. There's Treasure Hunt, which is notable because it came before 3 Demon, which was the year after 1983, and this gives us some sort of 3D immersive landscape. A little bit before Wolfenstein, but you can see where Wolfenstein was coming from. This game is um, called Treasure Hunt, and basically you go around a 3D area and pick up bits of treasure. And that's it. Finally, off mention, of course, it was still a big year for adventure games, with adventure games uh, both in text mode and also like Sierra's high res adventures, there was a few with graphics as well. Zork came out in this year and that was a well known series of text adventures. So yep, those ones are definitely on the notable list as well. Alright, well that's the end of this top 10 list and some notable mentions as well. What do you think? Did I get them right? Did I get them wrong? 
whatever, let me know. And if I've missed any, that's also important as well. Let me know in the comments. If you like this, please subscribe. I love it when I get subscribers. And if you just like this video, then feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'll be back sometime soon with the year 1983, so stay tuned for that. Till then, take care, have fun, and be excellent to each other. Ta-ra!